We are so grateful for each and every one of you that calls Life Church home, and we're so thankful that you're part of our family. This is my family. Um, that's BJ. Hi. That's Kalia. Hi. Kabe. Hi. These are my furry kids. This is Fenway, and that's Bruin. And we just wanted to share a family tradition with you. Because Fenway's feet went on my face. Oh man. Oh man. So every year uh, at Christmas time, before we would settle down and exchange gifts we would offer up our gift to Jesus first. Uh, we've been doing this since our children could write. And what we would do is we'd take a piece of paper and simply write down something that we'd offer up to Jesus. It could be our time, money, or serving someone. Uh, it was a simple reminder for us to keep our eyes on Jesus during this time of year and for the upcoming new year. So from our family to yours, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.
Hi everyone. Saludos a todos. Hi everyone. Hola a todos. So one of the things that we like to do as a family on Christmas morning is to make a giant brunch that fills up the table with all kinds of goodies and we light a fire in the fireplace and we watch movies like a Christmas story. O el día de, de Navidad en la mañana nosotros celebramos un día muy grande con un almuerzo grandísimo con comida que nos dura todo el día y comida puertorriqueña, mexicana and cheesy potatoes. And we hope you're making memories and spending time with your loved ones as well today. Y esperamos que este día de de Navidad ustedes tengan un día fantástico celebrándolo con toda su familia y amigos. So from our family, the Alcantars, to you, our Life Church family. De parte de nuestra familia, Alcantar y Life Church Latino, le deseamos a todos Feliz Navidad. Let's start working. <laughs> Merry Christmas from the Hogan family. We love Christmas here. We love Christmas because for us, it's all about family. Uh, this is Kennedy and Wilson and my husband Matt. On Sunday mornings we wake up early and open presents and we spend as long as possible in our pajamas. You know, smile or just Merry Christmas. <laughs> and we love to play board games on Christmas. We have our whole family over, my mom and dad, my grandma and grandpa. We all love to get together and play board games. So we don't play Pictionary anymore. It gets, it gets less than merry when we play Pictionary. So from our family to yours, we'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You hit me. I know I gotta go, just give me a second. Hi everyone. We love this time of year, mainly because we get extra time together. Um, we want to take a minute to share with you some of our favorite memories, traditions, and unfortunately, a few blunders. Speaking of blunders, one year this lady had the greatest idea of all to go drive down some people's houses that had these like bagged lights, but it was about two degrees, so it was freezing and so hungry we hadn't eaten since 2 p.m. Luckily that tradition did not stick. Yeah, I am so glad that tradition didn't stick because now we get shrimp and ham after church on Sunday. And then one of my favorite traditions is that uh, on Christmas Day we get to go to the movies and we see back-to-back -back movies and that's probably one of my favorites. I feel like the best part though, like stemming off of that, is that after the movies we then vote on where we're going to go out to eat and we like submit our ideas. I feel like mine almost always wins, um, best restaurant picker. But those are just a few of the crazy and fun and great things that we do together as a family during the holiday season. With that being said, from our house to your house, we would love to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Like the wise men. Are
Hey friends, Merry Christmas. What a great opportunity for us to spend some time together. Even though I'm not in your home and you're not in my home, we do have the opportunity to be together. And so, so honored for the opportunity to at least even play in the background on such a special day. I love Christmas. It's obviously my favorite time of the year. When, when you're a gift person, Christmas is over the top talking your love language. And so most people, when they have a particular love language, they don't only like to show their love in that way, they also like to receive their love in that particular way. And so for me, as a gift receiver, when you look at the love languages, my number one love language is the language of gifts. And so I love to receive gifts, but even more than receiving gifts, I love to give gifts. And so I am a big time gift giver. Like I can't stand the thought of somebody getting just one gift for me, even when somebody says, you know, oh, just buy me this, this one thing. And even when it's something expensive, even if it's just down to the stocking, I love to even make a big deal about the stocking. Even when I was a kid, my folks always went out of their way to make a big deal. There were years where we didn't have a whole lot of money. There were years when the auto plants were on strike and my dad had to make sure that he saved every penny that he could, my parents still made Christmas a really big deal though. They made it a big deal even with the stockings and so I carry that into my relationship with Sonny. And so my first Christmas together with Sonny, I got her 17 presents. I'm not kidding, it's still like legendary. She still talks about this to this day. I, I can't remember what most of the presents are. I think I bought her a coat and and I, I bought her a pair of Timberlands and. And it was really, it was my way of showing her my love. Ultimately in my mind, I felt like I was lavishing my love upon her. You know, when whenever somebody gives like a group of gifts, a whole bunch of different items, there's always like one big gift. It's kind of the centerpiece or, or most people give it as the finale. You know, they give all the other gifts and then they kind of wait. And the last thing that they give to somebody is the one that they've really been excited about them getting in. So then the rest of the gifts that kind of have been along that way, they've just kind of been the supporting cast. For me, that, that year with Sunny, when I gave her all the presents, the big gift was I got her a pair of uh, Jordan 11 Concords, which if you don't know anything about shoes, those are still the hottest tennis shoe in the world. They're the most in-demand shoe in, in the world. This was like back in 1995, and so they're like the white, and they have black patent leather down on the bottom. She didn't even know what they were, but I bought us matching Air Jordan 11 tennis shoes. And we actually still both have those shoes today. Not only am I a serious gift giver, God's a big time gift giver. So today, I wanna wrap up this series of messages that we've been in called Christmas in the 920. And I wanna talk to you in a message that we're calling God's Perspective. Can we pray just a minute? God, we love you and we're grateful to you. Thanks for my friends. Thanks for this day. Um, that is what the whole thing is about. This day, it's, it's the centerpiece of what the whole gig is about. And so today I pray for my friends, some of whom are eating meals and some of whom are trying to put toys together and figure out which batteries go where or wondering why they didn't buy batteries googling is walgreens open right now god please bought this great toy we didn't buy the batteries that's happened to me before god so i pray for my friends who are in the midst of that that the stress would kind of go away christmas movies would go on and people could watch tv together and light a fire and, and just have this really cool special day together so we point our attention towards you in jesus name amen so, so God's a gift giver. That's kind of the premise of what I want to talk about. I mean, he always has been, always will be. From the very beginning when God said, let there be light and there was, God has always been giving an obscene amount of gifts 
to humanity, but there really was one big gift. I, I wonder, I was thinking about this, this this last couple of weeks, have you ever gotten a gift within a gift, within a gift? Like like you open the one gift and, and kind of that gift leads to another gift, or, or maybe it's actually physically inside the other gift. I, I have a friend who, um, he, he gave, he part of his Christmas is he was gonna propose. And, and so he had kind of all of these different like clue gifts, if you would, and they were kind of all leading up and culminating to the last gift that she opened. And as she kind of opened the last gift, it was like this huge box, so it wouldn't be a dead giveaway. But as she kind of started to open this huge box, as she started to get into the center of the box, he got down on one knee. It was I like the most memorable Christmas, I'm sure, for anybody of all time. And, and, and it was like a gift within a gift within a gift. So a few years ago, uh, Sonny and I had this really cool opportunity to fly to Russia and to go to this thing in Moscow. And uh, Moscow, if you've never been there, it is a fascinating city. I loved it. It was cold and, and dark. It was interesting to watch these people who kind of like were trying to come out of communism and, and to kind of see like the some people dragging their feet and like the young people like, yay, we're free. And then like this whole other set of people who are like, oh, like, how am I going to eat? And so Moscow was like really the first place where I saw like what I would call subway shopping. And like, that's not when you go to like eat fresh. That's not, you don't like go and buy a sub and like you're so, oh, it's a foot long, which I love these Kentucky Fried Chicken commercials right now. And they open the thing. That's my kind of gift. Somebody gives me a bucket of chicken for Christmas. We're going to be friends forever. But what this is, is when somebody goes down in a subway station in Moscow. They have like these little booths, these little kiosks, if you would, set up all over the place. I mean, now in North America, we'd call those pop-up shops. But like you can go and they have all these really cool little kitschy booths and I bought this super dope hat. It's still like my favorite hat. It's like this herringbone, kind of, you kind of wear it to the side. It's got a little curve to it and it snaps in the front. I mean, just look, like you wear it with a cashmere coat. You just feel like you're Jay-Z. And so it's super fresh hat. It was like 18 bucks. And I kind of haggled with the guy until I felt like he was gonna murder me. And then I said, okay, fine, 18 bucks. I was trying to get him the 15, but it didn't work. So you go to these little things and you buy all this stuff. And like one of the things that's at really almost all the shops uh, are these little dolls and, and they look like this. I didn't get this in Moscow, obviously, because it looks, it, it looks like a geisha. I bought this at World Market in Appleton, but I bought my mom one of the Russian ones and I thought, why did I buy myself that and think that, you know, 10 years later I'd be speaking a message and I need one. They're called Mitryoshka or Babushka dolls or what we would call in North America, we would call these nesting dolls, Russian nesting dolls. And they really are a gift within a gift, within a gift, within a gift, within a gift. And when I thought about this particular little thing, it reminded me of God's perspective. Inside this, it's, you can hear this, there's more than one thing in here. And the reason that it reminded me of, of God's perspective is there is one big gift, and that big gift obviously we know is Jesus, and it's the essence of John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth him in him will never perish but have everlasting life. That gift, everlasting life, the gift of Jesus, in and of itself, obviously, it would have been more than enough. But the book of 1 John chapter 3 has this great scripture. Here's what it says. It says, See what great love the Father has lavished upon us. One of my favorite scriptures because it reminded me of that first Christmas with Sonny that, that the Father has lavished, lavished upon us that we should be called children of God. What that's saying is that there, there's more gifts available to us because of Jesus. But for us to access the additional gifts, we have got to open the big gift. Because Jesus, the big gift, he gives us access to more gifts. But we've got to open the big gift, Jesus, to get access to the other gifts. I mean, the New Testament lists, lists more than 50 gifts that God wants to give to us because of Jesus. But just for the sake of time today, I wanted to talk about four gifts that God gives us because of Jesus. And so here we have Jesus. That's our first gift. Here's, here's the first other gift that he wants to give us because of Jesus is 
He wants to give us a new identity. See, some of you, you need that. Some of you, you've been walking around through life and you feel like you're a reject or you're a loser. You feel like you're worthless. And particularly when Christmas time comes around, for so many of us, it's this time of joy. But for some of you, it is this time of pain, a time of sorrow and a time of loneliness. Maybe Christmas for you today is a TV dinner and a movie from Family Video. And for those of you, just know that I love you and you're part of my family and I'm sorry that you're sad. But through Jesus, you don't have to live in that identity. You don't have to live in the identity of what some teacher or what some pastor or priest or some auntie or uncle said about you. you. You are not small, you are not worthless, you are not insignificant. The Bible says that you are more than a conqueror, that you are a child of God whom he loved so much that he gave his very best. In fact, 2 Corinthians says that when someone accepts Jesus, that's the big gift, that person becomes a brand new person on the inside. He's not the same person anymore. A new life has begun. And so if like, you're living in that same life that you've always lived in, it's because you haven't gotten access. You haven't cracked open the seal of the big gift of Jesus. Like Jesus gives us everlasting life, but beyond like this everlasting life. Like incidentally, Christmas is not about giving. We make it a big deal like that Christmas is about giving, but Christmas is about receiving. From God's perspective, Christmas is about receiving. He's the one who does the giving and we're the ones who do the receiving. The Gospel of John says that if you'll follow my words, this is Jesus. He says you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Can I tell you that the truth is you are loved. The truth is you are important. The truth is you are more than a conqueror through Jesus. Otherwise, God wouldn't have loved you so much to give you the big gift. And so God wants to give you a new identity. Here's the second gift that God wants to give because of Jesus is God wants to give us a new ability. See, not, not one of us has the ability to change in and of ourselves. That's why the workout program didn't work. That's why the diet didn't work. You've been paleo. You've been vegan. You've been vegetarian. You've done the water diet, you didn't eat for six months and gained 12 pounds. And you can't change on your own because we don't have willpower in and of ourselves. We have it for a period of time, but at some point we are going to break the diet, break the plan, whatever that may be. And so because of Jesus, God gives us a new ability. Philippians 2 says this, it says, now God works in you, giving you both the desire and the ability to fulfill his good purpose. Friend, you can change. We really could have said that this gift was that, that God gives you new capacity. There is more to you. Like we just did this whole year of more. Friend, there's way more capacity in you. There's more that you're capable of. Like on this Christmas, like make it a determination that this is the last Christmas that you will walk around and you will tell others or tell yourself that you are not able. You are able. You're able to change. You're able to win. You're able to be a good dad. You're able to be a good husband. You're able to be a, a good employee. You are able to save money. You're able to give money away. You're, you're more than able, Scripture says. Second Timothy says, for God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but instead he fills us with power, with love, and with self-discipline. So here's the third gift that he's given us through Jesus, is that God gives us a new community, a new community. So many of you are lonely. Loneliness is at an all-time high. Sorrow, depression, people who feel like they don't have anybody to talk to, anybody to turn to. Isaiah and I were just over in Hong Kong for an event with Saddleback Church, and one of the things that Isaiah mentioned is there so many people here and they seem so empty. There were literally, there's seven and a half million people in seven square kilometers in Hong Kong and most of them look like they're alone. Some of you can relate to that. 
But can I tell you that when you become a Jesus person, you are given a new community. I'm your community. Pastor Sonny's your community. All like all the folks who work here and who serve here and the thousands of people who go to church here, they are your community. And Jesus has made that possible for you. In fact, Ephesians says, because of God's love, his unchanging plan has always been to adopt you into his own family and bring you unto himself through Jesus. First Timothy says, that family is the church of the living God, the support and the foundation of the truth. First Corinthians 12 says, a different spiritual gift is given to each of us in God's family so that we can help each other for the common good. That's why I'm good at some things and you're good at other things and the people that you know are good at other things because we've been destined and designed to do one thing well and that's love one another. And so can I tell you today, if you feel alone, it's because you haven't opened the big gift of Jesus to get access to your community. Here's the, here's the last one, is that God gives us a new destiny. This is the best one. This, this is the best one. First Peter chapter one, verse four says, God has reserved for his children the priceless gift of eternal life and it's kept in heaven for you pure and undefiled beyond the reach of change and decay. Romans 6 says the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. 2 Corinthians, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Acts chapter 10, it makes no difference who you are, where you're from. If you want God and you're ready to do as he says, the door is open. He opened all this so that you can get an identity. You can get a destiny. I look at this and I think of me. See, before Jesus, I thought I was the big one. But since I've spent plenty of time with Jesus, what I've discovered is that this is me. And that when I become small, he becomes big. How did I become small? I humbled myself in the sight of the Lord. Scripture says, if you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, he'll lift you up. That is the core of salvation. Humble yourself. Do you need to do that today? If you'll humble yourself today on this Christmas day, humble yourself, admit that you're not everything you need to be, but that you want to change. Admit that you're a sinner. Ask Jesus to forgive you and come into your heart. You will be saved. And all these things will be added unto you. So Father, today for my friends, I pray blessings, I pray peace, I pray that they would realize who they are and what they have. Friend, if you're here and you're watching this and you say, I need Jesus, just say this under your breath and meet it in your heart. Jesus, forgive me, I'm a sinner. In Jesus' name, amen. If you did that, you've got the ultimate big gift, the gift of eternal life. I love you, I'm glad that you were with us. Merry Christmas, enjoy your family.
Merry Christmas from the Pierces. Hey, Merry Christmas to you and your family. We hope you're having a great Christmas wherever you are. We hope you're having fun, lots of food, and creating some really great memories. One thing that we're looking forward to uh, this year, Jenny and I, is uh, creating some amazing memories with uh, Sawyer and Sienna, and some new ones from uh, that are gonna be kind of a blend from my family and Jenny's. So it's gonna be a lot of fun the next couple years for us with our little ones, and uh, we hope that you have an amazing time creating memories with your family too. We love you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from the viral household. Um, my family always had very busy Christmases because there were so many extended people. We, I have uh, like 50 cousins, so we would often just pause with just this small group of us. And what it looked like was we would turn on every Christmas light in the entire house dig out every candle we could find, and then light them and sit in the dark and talk. And it was the most fun for us, and I loved it. From all of us Eastmans, we'd like to wish you a really Merry Christmas. And we're so glad that, that you guys are part of our Life Church family, and just so excited to end this year with you guys and to start a new year with you as well. Isn't that what we were gonna say? Yeah, you were gonna say that. We were thinking about like some of our favorite Christmas. We couldn't even decide because we got a dog at Christmas, and I don't know. There's a bunch of great stuff that happened to us at Christmas time. But one of the things that we remember most is the is the year in our house that had like a two story living room, and so we we're like, let's buy the biggest tree ever. No wait, you said let's buy the biggest tree right. ever, and then you said let's buy the fattest tree ever. No, <laughs> no, false. she didn't because she hates big trees and small trees and they fat trees skinny. and skinny trees. It's just the worst. So anyway, we bought this really big, giant, super tall Christmas tree. And guess what happened? It fell over. <laughs> it totally, totally fell right out of the stand. The stand wasn't nearly big enough to hold it. And so, and so Kate like climbed up the ladder. We got it back into place, and she held the tree in place. And then I ran to the Home Depot. No, false. You weren't home when it happened. No, oh. you were with Abe somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this story gets better. And then you called me. That's right. You yes. called me and said, Scott, the tree fell over. I'm stuck. On a ladder holding the tree up. Now you made me. You made me. <laughs> yeah. See, now you don't even remember it, right? Yep. Anyway, one way or another, I ran to the Home Depot. Kate was stuck at home, holding the tree up, right, with a ladder holding this like ten thousand foot tree, weighed six thousand pounds at yeah. least, and I couldn't find the stand at Home Depot, so it was taking me forever until I finally got home. Anyway, so that the was, moral of the story. Uh, always listen to your husband by the biggest tree possible. Figure out the stand later. There's always time to yeah. find a bigger stand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> anyway, so again, <laughs> from all of us to all of you, we wish you the merriest of Christmases. God bless us. Everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas from, from the Heinrichs family. family. So Jason and I, I'm Abby. Um, I'm Jason. We don't have a ton of traditions on our own yet. We're newlyweds, so we're still kind of mm -hmm. figuring out what our traditions are. Yeah. But our families have some really cool traditions. Yes, they do. So my family, we would always go to the, the Christmas Eve service, and we'd go in the afternoon, and then we'd go to a really nice Chinese restaurant because it was one of the only places open on Christmas Eve. We go there, it's called the Golden Gate. I'm from Waukesha. Go down there, have a ton of fun, get a ton of crab ragoons and uh, load up on Chinese food. And then we go home and watch a Christmas movie of some sort, whether it's Elf, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. The Family Man. Family Man, just hang out as a family and then we just relax on Christmas. How about you? Um, on my side of the family, we have a long-standing Christmas tradition where we pass down it's called The Head, and <laughs> it's pretty disgusting, but it's kind of like a, a token of um, yeah. appreciation, so... Um, but it's during a gift exchange. It's a gift exchange. We don't just pass around a random head. Yeah, so yeah. it's a gift exchange. One person gets it a year, and if you get it, you're the lucky winner. So this last year, Jason got it. Yes, I did. It, Look at this beauty. There it is, The Head. The Head. So, so lucky me. Good <laughs> welcome to the, uh, to the, the family. Abby family. Mm -hmm. So, I guess, yeah, that's about it. Yep, yeah, and soon, maybe next year, we'll have our own traditions to share with you. Yes. So, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the Heinrichs family. Merry Christmas.
two, three. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas from the Cox family. We hope you're having a great day. of the family is every Christmas Eve we get to open up one gift and that one gift is our Christmas pajamas and we wear our jammies that night so that when we wake up Christmas morning we open our presents and we are all in our jammies together. So for our family to yours have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas Life Church family. I'm Dana and this is my son Brandon and we just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. So as I look into blah Totally just lost my train of thought. <laughs> what I want to share with you is a memory from my past. And the memory dates back a while ago when I was a kid. And on Christmas Eve, we would go to church. And we'd come back from church to my grandparents' house and we would just enjoy tons of presents and an awesome home cooked dinner. And there'd be tons of us just sitting around having family stories and conversations. And then as we fast forward a couple of years, I look at today. And what do I remember about those Christmas Eve services and this Christmas together? It's the presence of my family. So many of them are no longer with us and I just miss them so much. But I remember those days and I treasure those Christmases. So when I look at today and having Christmas with my son and our family, I just want him to remember the presence of us and the presence of family and fun and conversation I don't want to go back thinking, oh, this was the best baseball glove I got or bat. I just want it to be just full of love and happiness. So, Life Church family, make this the best Christmas ever and Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hey, everybody, this is Pastor Greg and my best friend Mac. Uh, we're here to just wish you the very merriest of Christmases. I hope that you have a blessed day. And, and really just celebrate all the great things that God has done in your life as we look forward to the next year. Um, just wanted to share just kind of one of my favorite uh, Christmas memories. I know that, uh, why am I saying thank you for anything? Let's start that over again. I don't know what the crap that was. Let's put that on that I loved the, the first Christmas that I had with this guy. Uh, he's just a small little pup. And I actually remember him walking around my, my mom's kitchen uh, because he'd eat so much food that his little belly would drag across the ground. It was just always fun. We, we just kind of laughed at him. Uh, the other thing is I've got, I've got these five beautiful nieces and every single year, it's amazing. Just getting to, to watch their faces light up as uh, they come down the stairs on Christmas morning and, uh, and we get to just uh, celebrate and, and open gifts and everything. It's, it's just so fun to be able to spend time with family and celebrate the birth of Christ. Uh, so from my family to yours, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you too. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your nose Yuletide carols being sung by a choir And folks dressed up like Eskimos Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe season bright tiny tots with their eyes all aglow will find it hard to sleep tonight they know that Santa's on his way he's loaded of toys and goodies on his sleigh and every mother's child is gonna spy to see if reindeer really know how to fly
time <laughs> that we have as a family is I always read a Christmas story in a book. This, I need it here. <laughs> what Christmas story? The Christmas story. The Christmas story. story. From the Bible? Yeah. No, from a little story. But is it from the Bible? Yes, yes, it's yes, it is from the Bible. It's a biblical yes. Christmas story. Since all Christmas is from the Bible. Yes, I think it's all from the Bible. It's from the Dollar Tree, but we've had it for seven or eight years now. Yeah. She just learned how to read it last year, though, so that's a good thing. So we're excited about it this year. So anyway, from our family to yours, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and a Happy New Year. I really Bye -bye. would like you to use that version, please. Okay.